Good morning. morning. And let's welcome everyone to this glorious Easter morning. He is risen. The response is, he is risen indeed. Let's raise the roof. He is risen. risen You're getting better once more. Let's raise this roof. He is risen. risen Brilliant. Brilliant. Welcome to anyone who might be visiting with us this morning. It'd be lovely to have your company as we go over for tea, coffee, and cakes. The God Squad are, hel- they don't know this yet, they're helping serving cakes, tea, and coffee this morning. Are you ready for this, yeah? Um, I forgot, forgot to tell them last week, it's absolutely fine. They're helping with the tea and coffee this morning. So please do come over. If you are a visitor, introduce yourself to somebody. Um, and just make yourself at home. We're in God's house. He loves it that you're here this morning. So just relax and enjoy his presence and his peace. Um, Margaret wants to make an announcement, so. As you see in the pew leaflet, we're having a retiring offering this morning for the Scottish Air Ambulance Service. The Guild recently had an excellent speaker from the unit and we're surprised to hear that this very valuable service does not receive any government grant. And it relies on donations, even although it provides such a life-saving service in Scotland. So we are asking you, if you're able, to give a donation to this excellent service. And there will be plates either uh, either of the doors. Thank you. Eggs up here. Who's really decorated? You've got wee wobbly eyes. I love those wee wobbly eyes. And we've got Egg Sheeran. Okay. Um, a member of the band say that. Does it anyone else bring any decorated eggs? Did you forget? Never mind, you forgot. I think these can make up for any that you don't have. Is that me? I'm gonna have to tell you the the um <laughs> The unit for this mic, I don't have pockets in this dress, so it's in rather a strange place. Um, I'm not gonna tell you where, but if you think I look a bit of a funny shape or more than normal, that gives you an idea. And so if it kind of goes off, it's probably me doing something I shouldn't do. I'll stand very still this morning. Um, One more announcement that isn't on the pure leaflet. Next week, we're gonna have the pleasure of the company of the Reverend David Burt who is the moderator of um, Paisley Presbytery. He's gonna come and and speak to you all next week. Um, So he's gonna take the whole service next week. This will be lovely, give you a sense of the gruesome twosome. Hey, Sandra. (laughs) Um, So please do come along. We've been telling Presbytery how vibrant we are, how busy we are in this church, and it's true. I know it's the Easter holidays and some of you might have plans, But please do come along next week and support the Reverend David Burt, but show him that Johnson High Parish Church is alive, it is vibrant, it is growing. So please do that. I did forget to raise that up again. Better? Sorry about this. I might have to put it on the table, but I might have to undress, so just close your eyes if I have to do that, right? Excuse me. <laughs> There's somewhere. <laughs> right, well, we'll cross our fingers, it's going to work. <laughs> and just cross your fingers, I don't have to get undressed this morning because it wouldn't be a pretty sight. All the other intimations, as I said, are on our, our pure leaflet. And um, anyone who's watching us via online service, a big special welcome to you. You might not be able to be with us in person to celebrate Easter, but you are with us in spirit. So please join in, sing along. We want to have a real joyous day this morning. Our first hymn is um, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. So we'll all stand and we'll sing that with joy.
we have a, a birthday card for a very special girl, and she wasn't here when I started the service, but I see she's arrived. So would Grace like to come out? Grace? Me? Is your name Grace? Yeah. Have you got birthday coming? It's April 1st. It's April 1st. And how old are you? Have you had your birthday? Is it this week coming? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so how old are you? I'm four. You're four. Mm -hmm. And how old are you going to be? Five. Five. My goodness me, you're going to be five there. Well done. And does that mean after the summer you'll be going to the school, big school? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Good. It's going to be great, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. A woman of few words, which is very unusual for a woman, I'm sure you'll agree. Anyway, you have a lovely birthday. Okay, Grace? Yeah. Okay, darling. Thank you. Five, isn't that lovely? Okay. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, nothing is impossible for you. Help us to believe the promises that you've made to us. Teach us to walk in your way and to trust and obey where you are leading us even if we find it difficult. Give us the courage to keep going when times are hard and the understanding to let some things go. May we have the patience to keep faithful when your time is not our time, <clears throat> knowing that you will act in us and through us when the time is right. Grant us the humility to accept that we don't know all the answers but that you do. For you, Lord, are all caring, all knowing, and all loving. In you we place our hope, and in you we trust. And now we come before you, praying the words your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we've got a wee short video for you so just enjoy this. The Easter story begins on Palm Sunday. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey. The crowd shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They waved their palm branches and laid their cloaks on the ground. A few days later, Jesus and his disciples were sharing the Passover meal. Jesus predicted that one of them would betray him and his disciples were shocked and saddened. Jesus broke the bread and said, This is my body, broken for you. And then he took the wine and said, This is my blood of the covenant, poured out for many. Jesus said to Peter, Before the cock crows this very night, you will disown me three times. But Peter insisted, I am willing to die with you, Jesus. I will never disown you. Jesus and his disciples went out to the garden of Gethsemane. Jesus asked his disciples to keep watch while he prayed. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. If it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. Then Judas came to betray Jesus to the Jewish leaders. Jesus was arrested and the disciples ran away. The Jewish leaders put Jesus on trial before the high priest. Even though Jesus was innocent, he didn't defend himself from the false accusations made against him. When the high priest asked Jesus, are you the Messiah? Jesus answered, I am. 
Then they all condemned Jesus to be deserving of death, and they beat him. While Jesus was on trial, Peter was in the courtyard below. Three times Peter was asked if he knew Jesus, but three times Peter denied knowing him. The cock crowed and Peter remembered what Jesus had said, and he wept. Jesus was then taken to Pilate, the Roman governor. Pilate knew Jesus was innocent, but the crowd shouted, crucify him. And Pilate was afraid. So Pilate let Barabbas, a murderer, go free instead of Jesus. They dressed Jesus with a purple robe and a crown of thorns. Jesus was crucified on Good Friday with a thief either side of him. At midday, darkness came over the whole land for three hours. Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then he breathed his last. When the Roman centurion saw how Jesus died, he said, Surely this man was a son of God. After Jesus died, his body was placed in a tomb. And a heavy stone was rolled across the entrance. Early on the morning of the third day, the women came to anoint Jesus' body, according to the Jewish custom. But when they got there, the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. An angel told them the good news. Jesus is not here. He has risen from the dead. Such a glorious, wonderful, amazing, awe-inspiring conclusion to that week. Having gone through the, the joy of Palm Sunday, <clears throat> the terrible sadness of Good Friday, but on a Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead. And for that, we can all be forgiven our sins and the promise of spending eternity with him. Amazing story. I did actually forget to mention the beautiful Easter display um, that Maureen did, did that. Was it Maureen that did our display? Hmm? Margaret Hill. Sorry, Margaret. Normally it's Maureen. Does it? It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So thank you for this, that display in our church. It just brightens up the, the whole day. We're now going to sing He Has Risen just to celebrate the story of Easter. But of course we need a band and we also need... Band. So out you come, grab your instruments, and let's sing He is Risen. Such a big decision choosing which instrument you're going to play, isn't it?
verse 1 to 2, 14 and 17 to 20. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say his love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for you are hands of me. You have become my salvation. Thank you, Kathy. Our next hymn is God Sent His Son. No. Right, orchestra again. I know it's dreadful, isn't it? <laughs>
God sent his Son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy Gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 20, reading from verse 1, the passage is entitled, The Empty Tomb. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. 
He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, and as well as the cl was the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Amen, and may God add his blessing to these readings from his holy word. Thank you, Raymond. It's lovely to see so many people here this morning who will come out to celebrate a wonderful, amazing Easter day. But I've got a question for you. Why did you come? Many of you are regular worshippers in Johnson High Parish Church. Perhaps some of you came today just because it is Easter, and that's what people do at Easter. They go to church. Maybe some of you came here under duress because someone told you that you had to be here today. But others of you may have come here to hear the resurrection story. And if that's the case, I hope you're not disappointed because you've heard the resurrection story as told in the Gospel of John. However, I think if you look and listen carefully today, you might hear other stories as well. Now, knowing there might be a variety of, variety of opinions or views on this day, I felt a little in anticipation as I began to write my talk today, or perhaps anxiety would be a better word, I wanted to say something that would speak to everybody, from those of you who've heard the story at least once a year for your whole lives, to perhaps someone who maybe hasn't heard the story and they're hearing it for the first time today. So I wonder what words could I say that would convey the magnificent enormity of the events on Resurrection Sunday, a day when sadly many are distracted by other trappings, chocolate, preparing a family lunch, or an Easter egg hunt. And more importantly, I wonder what words of hope could be spoken to those for whom today is just like any other day, another day of dealing with difficult problems, or the same old problems that never seem to go away. All these things were going through my mind the first time I read John's passage. But a funny thing happened. Here was a beautiful Easter story full of hope and expectation. And try as I might, I couldn't get past the first sentence. I read, early in the morning on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene, Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. 
and then I stopped. I read on to get the core of the message, the discovery of the empty tomb, the confusion of Mary and the disciples, the angels, the gardener, Mary's realization that Jesus was not dead, but had risen from the grave. But I was struck by one phrase, while it was still dark. Initially, I assumed John probably wrote this statement with reference to the time of day, just a minor detail to set the scene. But since I could not get past it, I had to wonder why the phrase was going round and round in my mind. And that's when it dawned on me, pardon the pun, dawned on me, are you with it? Dawned on me, yeah. The darkness that John was talking about was not just the physical darkness we experienced before sunrise, but it was a spiritual darkness as well. You see, on that first Easter morning, things looked very bleak for all of Jesus' followers, and none more than Mary Magdalene. She'd been with Jesus almost from the beginning of his ministry. She'd seen lives changed, sick people healed, eyes opened. But on Friday, just a few days before, Jesus had been crucified. Nails had been driven into his hands and his feet. A sword had pierced his side. She stood at the cross, helplessly, while he died. And her heart was broken. How could this have happened? This was the man who had come to save Israel. Where was God in all of this? That morning, as she came to the tomb to anoint his body for burial, her heart was heavy and her soul, well, it was still dark. Mary was probably wondering, what will I do now? Peter and the other disciples could go back to their old lives, fishing, tax collecting, go back to their families, But what about Mary? She didn't have a life she wanted to go back to. More importantly, what was she going to do without Jesus, her friend and her saviour? There was sadness and disappointment and emptiness, emptiness must have consumed her. Her heart must have been broken. Most of all can probably relate to Mary's feelings because we've all had times in our lives when we stood with our dreams lying in tatters around us. Our children have gone astray. Relationships are crumbling. We've just lost our job or been given bad news by the doctor. And we've asked, why me, Lord? My life was going so well until now. And now the darkness has overtaken me. See, we have to remember it's easy to believe while everything is sunlight and happiness, but very difficult to believe when things are dark and bleak. It's easy to believe God is for us when life is good, but when it turns sour, we might feel rejected, abused, or abandoned. Anyone can walk in the sunshine. Only the faithful can walk in the dark. But the fact is, no one experiences all sunshine. Remember that all sunshine and no grey clouds to make rain produces a desert and not a garden. But back to that morning in the garden at the tomb. Mary believed in Jesus with all her heart, yet she didn't think it would end this way. But all was not as it seemed, because even though it was still dark, We know that Jesus had already risen. And we know this because we are told the tomb was empty. That first Easter morning, the gloom lifted for Mary when Jesus called her by name. Her sorrow was turned into joy. Defeat turned into into victory. Darkness was overcome by light. Death had been conquered and it no longer had or has the last word. Mary had a new hope for her future life. 
It's the same for us when we stumble through periods of spiritual darkness. Jesus is there whether we can see him or not. God's plan for our lives is still moving forward, even, we can, even when we cannot discern the way, if only we believe. So today, if you are in any of those spiritually dark places, and we all are at one time or another, know that there is hope. And remember the first verse of the reading today because while it was still dark, Jesus had risen. Amen. We're now going to stand and sing The Wonder of Your Cross. No?
Let us pray. God of power and love, we give you thanks that you raised your son, Jesus Christ, from the grave, that you caused his tomb to be empty, that you gave hope by your presence. We thank you that the powers of evil, which seem to overcome all light, goodness, and love on that dark Friday, were overcome on Resurrection Day, defeated as your Son overcame death. We thank you that in Christ rising, we have hope for life beyond, before and beyond death. It is an inspiration for our lives as witnesses to your grace, comfort for our pain, and total faith in place of fear. We thank you that through your son's resurrection, our sins are forgiven, and we have the promise of eternal life with you. We pray for those who do not know about the miracle of resurrection and of the eternity in paradise. Help us to spread the word in our neighborhood, places of work, towns where we live, indeed every place where there are people who need to hear the good news. In this troubled and divided world where our fears run deep, hopes are often dashed and dreams broken. Many people are living desperate and desolate lives and foresee only pain and despair. But your son has given us an expectation for a bright future and the assurance of eternal life. Lord, may the joy of this Easter fill our hearts with love, happiness, and hope in the days to come. Amen. I'd like to invite our God Squad and Lighthouse now to come up. <coughs> oh, go down. Okay. Will you just come? Move up, right up, squash in. They're all coming up now. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Move on, squash up a wee bit. Got so many, haven't we? It's fantastic. Okay. We can move right up. In fact, come down forward a wee bit. Come forward a wee bit. Come forward. Okay. Are we all in? We're all in, okay. The awesome Easter surprise. Is Easter about all those chocolate eggs we give on this wonderful season? There's no doubt they're a treat, but that's not what we eat. That's important, and here's the reason. For chocolate eggs, all our very thing for 2,000 Easter's gone by. It the stories of Jesus. The people have told how he died, but God raised him on high. For one day long ago, the saddest of days, wicked people put Jesus to death, and he died for your sins, and for mine, and for all, and he loved till his very last breath. On the first Easter morning, all thought of after came the world, the best full of spirit to all on his bodies, but they are at all time there to to surprises 
full of spirit. Spirit. He is not there. He is risen, said the two shining ones. He is alive, risen from the dead. So the rest of the tell all the disciples all the angels had said. You're joking, said most of them. That sort of thing doesn't happen as well as, as well you should know. But Peter and John ran straight off to the tomb as fast as they ever could go. I wonder what we will find inside. They were thinking and wondering if they could dare to poke their heads in there. But when they arrived, it was true. There was nobody there. The women were right. Jesus was alive, and over the next 40 days, they might they meet him again and again, and he taught them more of his wonderful ways. The two of them walked on the road to Emmaus. So sad because they thought he was dead. He walked and he talked with them, joined their meal, and they knew when he broke the bread. When one of the followers doubted, he said, come here, touch my hand and my side. And Thomas soon realized he wasn't a ghost. My Lord and my God, he replied. And when the disciples went out in their boat, they didn't catch all they could wish. A mysterious stranger stood on the shore and gave them a net full of fish. As the Lord exclaimed Peter and leapt overboard, the waters closed over his head, but he and the others got safely to Jesus. Come and have breakfast, he said. So Easter's much more than a chocolate egg, though chocolate eggs are just fine. It tells us of Jesus who rose from the grave and forgives all our sins, yours and mine. Thank you. Well done. That was fantastic. Can we give a round of applause for that? We're now going to sing, He is Lord. It's going to be the, on the organ, but we'll get the band out anyway. Come on. I just want to see you sitting down in case you fall asleep.
They're trusting me with this again. Now, you know what happens when I get hold of this thing? I do all sorts of things. Anyway, he's up there for a reason. A sweet truth about Easter. These chocolates tell a story of the news that you should know. That Jesus died upon the cross because he loves us so. So pick one up and turn it round. And I've done it again. I've done it again. <laughs> no, it's fine. So pick it up and you will see. The M becomes a W. An E and then a three. <laughs> I told you when you give me this thing, I always manage to turn it off. The E it stands for Easter, for God's love and his plan. Lord Jesus died and rose again, and through it, God saved man. The three stands for the three long days for Jesus in that grave. But by his death and through his love, his children all were saved. The M recalls his mercy when he died in our place. The, through resurrection's miracle, one day we'll see his face. The W tells that he alone is worthy of worship and praise. He tells us all to speak of him and witness all our days. As you enjoy your Easter treats, we hope you will recall that Jesus died upon the cross so he could save us all. Amen. Now you might see something has appeared, okay? So first of all, we're going to get all the the babies from our creche, all the wee ones that are less than 18 months, could they all come out, please? We've got a wee book for them. Where's all our babies? Where's Mia? Did we, she's outside. No, no. no you, Uncle Callum doesn't get giving it to her. That's not fair. So if you've got a baby in arms, please bring your baby out to the front. Where's all our babies? They're coming, right. Easter? Happy Easter, darling. You coming home with me? Okay. Well, there you go. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. There you go. There she is. Mia? There you go. Have you been for you? Oh. Huh? You like that? Okay, thank you. Uh. <laughs> okay. All our, wee, all our toddlers now, all our sparklers, where are they? Let's see if our sparklers out. Here she comes. What colour would you like? A pink. I knew it was going to be a pink one. Okay. A lilac. Oh, oh. A green one. A blue one. A pink one. A purple. Uh huh. Just one. Who's that for? There she is, little big sister. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You're lucky there's one left. Would you believe it? <laughs> Okay. And now our lighthouse. Would you like to come out and get their eggs? Just choose which egg you want. Go and choose an egg. Whatever one you want. There's, there's M&Ms up there. You can have one of those if you want. Okay. Don't disappear. Did you get your book? No, 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 no. Oh, you're in there. I'll get it for you in a minute. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, well, that's good. There we go. There we 
Did the God Squad get a book? Only two or three. Did everyone get a wee book? Yeah. Get one. Okay. I'll get you a book. Has everyone got something now? Yeah? Everyone got something? I hope so. Oh. It's not like you to be last, is it? Choose an egg. This must be mine. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> Does everyone have a, a, an Easter gift? Yeah. Zoe, yes, of course. I thought we'd take one for her. Just, hang on, don't mind. Am I not getting one? Well, that's not fair. Sorry, Callum, there's none left. I've got something for you, though. Come on, Callum. Callum always gets the leftovers. It's Easter Mallow bunnies for you, especially for you. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> right, we're going to have to put our eggs down just now because we need the band. Okay, put your eggs on you. your seat, and come out and let's have some... Real good music. I have no idea how much work this takes to choose an instrument, honestly. Oh, you don't want that one, no? Okay. Lady, what are you going to have? What are you going to have? Hmm? I'm having that one. Which one? Which one? Are we ready? Yeah. There you go. You can that. Meeting 
face to face, I am yours, Jesus, you are mine. Endless joy, perfect peace, every pain finally will cease. Celebrate, Jesus is alive, he's alive. Amazing. Now, please don't forget to come and join us for coffee, tea, and cakes in the church hall. And for the God Squad, you won't know this, some of you. The God Squad, you're helping to serve tea and coffee this morning. Okay. So we'll see you then. These will be your, 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 your lovely servants. Your, right, okay. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us on this blessed Easter day. Amen. Amen.